My name is Daniel Velasco. I'm the executive director of the Al Held Foundation. The show is a culmination of five years of partnership between the foundation and White Cube. So this exhibition about space is a mini retrospective with um, key masterworks from all the early phases of Al's career and it culminates in this extraordinary display of luminous constructs from the last 20 years of his career. Al was born to working class immigrant parents in Brooklyn and remarkably Al had no exposure to art whatsoever as a child. It wasn't until when he was going down to Greenwich Village and interacting with artists and poets and musicians and left-wing political organizers that he started to be exposed to art in the form of social realist painting. Taxi Cab 4 was really part of a breakthrough series. He simplified his language into the basic geometry of circle, square, and triangle. He also reduced his palette into primary colors, and he just really let loose as an expressionist, but using this geometry. But in the next phase, he also introduced the straight lines or the hard edges. I was painting these large, almost billboard scale portraits of letters, and he wasn't interested in them as letters in terms of what their semantic meaning was, but he was interested in them as these found shapes because he felt that you know, there was so much complexity in the world, uh, contradiction, and that he just wanted this one painting that he's working on to be a statement of singularity and truth. In 1967, Al created a new list of what he called Thou Shalt Nots, which were things that he couldn't do, and he eliminated color and flatness, and he began his black and white series, and he gave himself the permission to blow open the space and to create volume and depth and illusionism, which at that point in 1967 broke pretty much all the rules of modernist painting. For Al, it was always a real cohesive movement and an understanding that you know one period would feed the next period. In 1981, he spent six months at the American Academy of Rome as an artist in residence, not painting, drawing and actually starting to play around with watercolors and studying Renaissance painting, he came home with a whole new set of ideas that really invigorated this Return to Color series and the work became more architectural. He started to add light into the work. He was also reading science, popular mechanics magazine, and beginning to take a stronger interest in contemporary scientific ideas. So we really find him now as he's moving into this luminous contract period where there's an extraordinary hybridity of all these various influences that, that Al had. He's still the diehard abstract expressionist. He's still fascinated by uh, Renaissance painting and he's also completely stimulated by new ideas about physics and multidimensionality. He invites you to sit on the bench and he called his paintings mind games. He really would want you to explore the space mentally and imagine yourself in all of its different corners. Roberta's Trip 2 is part of a series of paintings that Al made, really in memory of his sister who had died of cancer and she was his only sibling and he really loved her. And so it occurred in this early period of the luminous constructs where he really brings in a lot of the light that became so crucial to the rest of his painting. Eagle Rock 4 was finished in 2004, so that was just a year before Al died. He was 75 years old. This is the last major painting that Al made that's a stretched painting. It's 15 feet high by 30 feet wide. He never had the opportunity to present it in his lifetime. The painting has never been shown before. To the end of his life, Al was fundamentally an optimist. These are optimistic paintings. He was trying to find some kind of harmony uh, or balance within these competing truths, these multiple truths in a world. And so for him, it was a really a, a leap of positive faith that there can be some kind of singular structure that underlies all the chaos. 
and allowing our eye and our imaginations to not just be involved with what's happening in front of us, but to give us the freedom to then move beyond what's immediately here.